Everybody love the Lord today. Amen. I do. I feel good in your soul today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's raise our hands. Let's get our mind upon the Lord. I do that, oh God. It's good to serve you today, oh Father. Bless us today, we pray. Lift us up above the shadows, oh God. We just praise you and thank you, Lord, for what we feel in our soul. Hallelujah. It's good to be free, Lord, to be able to lift our hands unto thee. Amen. I know that you're here, and that's your prayer today. Oh God, how we praise you. Amen. Bless us today. And the church is everywhere where men are gathered. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I do believe this is a special time more than we really realize. I've always I've always said that, that I believe when we get to the other side, we'll be able to look back and we'll we'll see what we really had here. But at the time we don't really realize it. But the Bible said that where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, There I am in the midst of them. Can you understand that? There's no question about whether he's here. No. And so we're two or three together. There I am. He said, I'm there. So you don't need to look for him. He's right here. And he's observing and he's and he's hearing. Amen. Acknowledging. He's teaching and speaking into our hearts. You know, as a young minister, I used to worry a lot of times about what I got up and said or or uh, if I didn't a lot of times I get done I say, Boy, I just didn't do very good, you know. And uh, but uh, God speaks. God speaks. And we may not understand it at the time, but he gets said what he wants to say. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You ever hear somebody preach say, Boy, I wish I could preach like that? Oh yes. Well they probably do too. You know, I mean you get when you get anointed, you do say that I'm I'm amazed what comes out of my mouth sometimes. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Way down deep somewhere where the Spirit planted it. It was there all that time and, and God saw fit to bring it forth at that time. Right. And so I found out that's the way it is. See, when we come together, uh, I, I, through the years I've caught a lot of flack from people because a lot of times I don't, I don't finish a message. In fact, sometimes we'll read 30 verses and I never give in a preach. Right. <laughs> but see, what we're doing is is trying to focus ourselves yes. so that God can work through us. Amen. See, there is a mind of the Spirit right now. Amen. There's something that God wants said to the church this morning. Yes. And sir. so we're channels. And we're just channels to be used of God. And so we use this as a focal point to start. You got to start somewhere, right? And we all ought to start maybe at the same place. <laughs> yeah. But the beautiful thing that I've learned about the Spirit through the all many years that I've been doing this is that. Uh, we're inadequate. There's no way we could speak to every need in this building. Nope. Oh, no. If we set out to, I could sit down and make notes and work and say, now I'll get this one for this one. And a lot of people think you do that. A preacher, a preacher right at me. I said, boy, you must think you're important. I mean, we got better things to do to so decide who we're going to preach on. No, it doesn't work that way. We throw it out there and the Spirit knows where it needs to go. Absolutely. And it falls into different hearts. According to where you're at, in your position right now at this hour, in the kingdom of God where you stand, and He knows your situation. Amen. And He'll, that's why I tell people, if you just come faithfully and offer yourself, He'll get to your problem. Amen. You, you may not believe it. And this, well, I didn't get a thing out of this today. Well, just hang in there. You might tomorrow. You know, you got to just keep coming and keep plugging away. Amen. And over the, over the time, God will get His message to every individual. That's why Jesus said that these things shall you do and greater things shall you do. Why did He say that? Because He was one person walking around Palestine trying to reach people. Mm -hmm. But now by His Spirit, He's talking to every heart in this building today. Amen. Individually. Right. He's speaking to your heart. And some are saying, yeah, amen, amen. And some say, well, I can add to that. I mean, because that's the way it is. It's a hard thing to keep preachers' mouth shut during the Bible study. Well, they got they want to say something. Because the Holy Ghost is speaking to them. And says, yes. Yeah, and what about this? And yeah, what about that? And that's why that's why this is so great. Amen. That God is ministering to every individual heart in here. Regardless of how young you are. Or how old you are, yes. how strong you are in the Lord, whether you're a 30 or a 60 or a 100 fold or a 25 or a 10 or, or a 9 or wherever you happen to stand, wherever you're at, He's God for you today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and you have, your job won with Him. I used to think about this when I worked at Ford. I'd go through the uh, factory on the way into work and everywhere they got signs that said, Job won. You know, uh, our, uh, our business is Job won. 
And I thought about God, how we are job one with God. Yes. We're job one. He's interested in one thing today. That's your salvation. Yes. Amen. And if you're the one that's in trouble and you're the one in need, you're the one He's concerned about that's today. Right. He may walk up and kind of leave me for a little while to go help you. Because if you're the one that's really in need. And of course, then my time will come up too. You know? Amen. And that's the goodness of God. Yeah, He left the 99. Went out after that one that was lost. And spiritually, he still does that sometimes. Sometimes people get uh, they get jealous because some gets a lot of attention, but sometimes some needs a lot of attention. Amen. Maybe the more than you do, you maybe if you don't need to, uh, much attention. Maybe that's a sign you're growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord, Amen. and you can kind of leave you alone a little bit and go pet and love on somebody that really needs pity pats and all, honey. I love you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Now come on, just keep on going. You ever do that? Yeah, I've done that many times. <laughs> Don't give up. I know it's tough now, but things are going to get better. Hang in there. And and that's what God does. See? He's just a wonderful God. Yes, He is. Yes. 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 I, uh, I read these first chapters to lay a foundation, and this 12th chapter is about the gifts of the Spirit. And I wasn't going to teach on the gifts of the Spirit, but I love this foundation that it laid here. Said, I beseech you, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and simple unto God, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. service. Now, I was, uh, Sister Patty has been having a lot of throat problems. She has a problem with, uh, what do you call it? Uh, COPD. And, oh. Yeah, that's what they call it. And, uh, and I, of course, I've encouraged her to sing. She used to sing a lot in the church years ago, you know. She was young back in the days and she was strong. <laughs> now like the rest of them, she's kind of going down the other side. <laughs> but I love her and I I know a singer that likes to sing. You know? If you're a singer, you want to sing. And and uh, so I've always encouraged her to sing. And so one night she told me some months back, she Brother Patrick, I don't mean to be disobedient. I just haven't, I'm just not able. I don't know. I've fallen into this thing and I've got this ailment in my body. She began to tell me, so I felt kind of bad then that I didn't kind of push her a little bit. And so the other night, somebody had asked her to sing and she said, I, I, I just can't do it. So then later on in the uh, in the service, uh, somehow or other, I, I, uh, I put the pressure on her to do it. And it wasn't really putting the pressure on her I just I, I, I just encouraged her to. And of course she loves me, so she came one up here. And I feel like God touched her. Amen. I feel like she, and so Daisy right now she was ready to bounce me, see. And you know she don't feel like singing, and there you are. I said, now hold on here. I said <laughs> You give your body a living sacrifice. I mean if if uh, if she's well able, everything was perfect. It wouldn't, what kind of sacrifice would it be? It wouldn't be lame. But I said, I'm not talking about the Spirit now. See, before I wouldn't send it up, so I said, okay, honey, don't you worry about it. We, we ain't going to make you sing. Don't you worry, you know. I, but, see, but I was bold and didn't the uh, Holy Ghost, see. So I said, maybe she needs to sing, get a blessing from God, you know. See, that's the Spirit speaking out. And, and uh, she came forward and she said, and I can tell that she was stronger when she got better than she was when she started. Amen. Sometimes we just need a touch of God's Spirit. Yes. I'm so glad that we're not that big 10,000 people church that if you don't sound perfect and you're not up there. God doesn't care what it sounds like. Well, me too. You step out and you just make that effort. He's going to bless you whether it's a or whether it's a quill or whether it's a sound of heart. Yeah, mm -hmm. I used to worry about playing playing perfect. Now I hit a lot of jazz notes, you know. I tell them, well, I hit a real sour note. They said, "Brother, I said jazz. I don't play jazz." Because <laughs> you can't tell them, you know, I'm playing jazz. It don't make no difference. You can hit any kind of note. So that's my excuse. I said, "What was that?" I said, "Jazz." <laughs> Which well, don't make a fortune on that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> And so that's my excuse. And they, was, uh, they was bragging on me down there to Brother Joel's. And Joel said, Now are you talking about a guitar player? He said, yeah, boy, he's a guitar Well, that's the boy here that, that uh, was there, had an electric guitar. And he was one, Brother of, the, Caldwell. one of the Caldwells. The Caldwell boys that used to sing around this part of the country. And he played. He could sing. He could play and sing. And so I said, Well, I, I said, I've always had a method. When I'm around a good singer, I tell them I'm a guitar player. 
<laughs> and when I run a good guitar player, I turn on the singer. <laughs> but when I get around one of those guys who can do both, you know, <laughs> then I say, I'm learning. There's a, you know. <laughs> I said, no, don't build me up to you. That's maybe he'll play rings around me. And while I, uh, while I was singing, he's playing some really nice notes back here. He might well have been able to do that, see. But uh, I'm down the road far enough, that's not a big issue in my life anymore, you know. I, and so... Uh, I'm glad about that too, Jennifer, because I hear a lot of jazz notes. And the older I get, the more jazz notes I hear. But at the same time, I, I know a lot of guys my age that play, I can't even hardly get across the strings now. Their arthritis is so bad, they can't even, you know. And I've told you about my, my thing with that years ago when I was, I was washing dishes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I wash dishes. <laughs> I do laundry. <laughs> I mean, I've been broke. Yeah. I, 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 was, I was broke years ago. But Tony told me last night, he said, I understand what you meant now when you said, uh, uh, Daisy points me in the right direction and says, go, and so I just go. I don't even question. He said, anyway, he's going to do something. When he said, here, here, do this, you know. I said, you got one of them too? He said, yeah, I understand where you're at. She says, go when I go. I don't even question. What are we playing up next? I, I don't know. I, ask Daisy. She can tell you. Uh, they just point me and I go. Uh, but I, <laughs> I learned the magic words. Yes, dear. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you learn that, you can live a, a nice, long, happy life and have a lot of contentment in your home. If you just learn the words, Tim. Yes, dear. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, <clears throat> I remember the day Tim Eggers learned him words, very words, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I see him too about it too. But uh, uh, that, that's all part of the old process of getting, of getting through life, realizing that it's a give and take kind of a situation. So When mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. That's, that's the truth. That's the truth. I, I said, uh, I told someone, uh, I think it was just yesterday, so I was telling them, I said, well, the fact of the matter is that I take care of all the big situations in our life. I said, I'm working on Afghanistan now, and I just got kind of got done with the uh, oil situation down in the Gulf. I just about got that straightened out. We should have that. I, I take care of all the big situations, and Daisy takes care of all the little things like my money. Oh, I know what it was now. <laughs> I was at trackside, and they said, and this uh, lady came to me and said, Here's some money for those t-shirts. I said, no, uh, Daisy don't allow me to take money. I said, she, she has some money. And they knew I was just teasing them, you know. <laughs> Here, take this money, she said. And while I was there, another lady bought a t-shirt. And I said, I'll see if she gets it. I know you, I know you. I said, so I told him, I said, no, see, you don't understand. I said, we, we have a situation in our home. I take care of all the big things. I said, I'm, I just... Finished up taking care of the spill down in the Gulf, the oil spill. I'm getting that all straightened out, and and uh, <laughs> and I'm taking care of Afghanistan and what little I can do still in Iraq. I'm working over there. All the big problems I take care of. And I said all the little things like my money. She takes care of that. All the little things. All the little things like where we go to eat, where we go to vacation, and and what color uh, this we're going to have, or what, you know, that's just, she handles all She's that, you know. Today, isn't he? He's I, full of I it. I take her all the big things, you know. He is full of it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get some hats, Pat Davis. Ah, well. I better get back on the message. <laughs> <laughs> It's called the art of compromise, you know. You, you gotta know how to compromise. I should have been a diplomat, I guess. I I, I want to be diplomatic with that. But uh, but it said here that uh, to give your body living sacrifice and be not conformed to this world. Uh, I, I tell you, you can struggle alone a lot of years trying to serve God and still conform to this world, and it's it, it's a battle. It's 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 a battle run. Because there's a lot of good things about this world. Well, don't get me wrong. I, I don't mind at all if I'm out on the road turning on the Grand Ole Opry and listening to Rocky Top. It does not bother me. A lot of people say, I can't, can't do that. Well, I can. Yeah. Amen. I, mean, I, I like Rocky Top. So don't try to uh, c condemn me about it. I like it. Right? It's just a song. Come on. Talk about moonshine whiskey. And everybody knows what that is. And I, and I wouldn't drink it for the last thing on earth because I just don't care about it. 
Uh, but but anyhow, but I like the song. And the guitar boogie, I like the guitar boogie. He's a boogie woogie preacher. Oh yes, I do the boogie woogie gospel sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like it. I don't need to try to get me in there. And so it got me to thinking about this message I'm going to get into over in the 13th chapter. But it says that uh, be not conformed to this world, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I could stay all the morning right there on that scripture. This is a mind game we're in. Oh and the mind controls a lot of what we do and how we react and how we act in God. He said, except you be converted and become as a little child. Now he knows you're not going to be changed into some little child. Come on. No. But in your mind, in your innocence, yes. the innocence of a child is one of the most beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And that's what you love about children. They're so innocent. Yes. Right. That's right. And I, I love to look down in a, in a baby's face and you can see you're about as close to God as you're ever going to get. I used to sit in Rock Lisa and just look into her face and talk to God. Because I can see the innocence of God in those little eyes. And, and you know, no wonder she had no chance of escaping this. She had to come on in. And she got the Holy Ghost at a very young age because I was continually talking spiritual things to her. I, I, I worked on all my sermons right there, looking at her in the face. Poor little thing, she didn't have a chance. She was surrounded. <laughs> but it's the truth. The innocence in thinking. I knew when I first got saved, they had told me to, 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 to roll and tumble and do this and that, and then I'd have done it. I mean, I was ready to do anything God wanted me to do. I didn't care. Yeah, and I couldn't stay away from the church. I was in the church all the time. I'd go down in the middle of the night and I'd knock the church and go in and just sit and just look at the ceiling. Because I wanted to be close to God wherever He was at. That's one reason I try to fix it where you can get in the church. I, I don't lock the door. I take the bars off the door and keep those bars on there. And it's worked for 24 years and nobody broke in yet. So it's worked out pretty good those bars I put on the door. But in the morning, the first thing I do is come and take the bars off the door. And there's some in the church that have keys, and I've always made it available to anybody that, that is a regular member here that you can get in, or you know somebody you can get a key from, and you can come in any time of the day or night you want to come in, you can come in. Uh, and that's all right. Because I used to do that same thing. I'd go down and mow the grass. I'd do anything just to be close to the church. There's just something about it, the closest of it. And I was just, I was in love. I didn't, you heard me sing that song the other night, I'm in love with Jesus. I sang that at our uh, singing the other night. I said, that's the song that drew me to Christ. That was a song my pastor was singing. The night I come to Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus, and He's in love with me. Yes, sir. Wow. I have a picture of King Jesus I would love to let you see. For He's the healer of all diseases. He's the master of the sea. I'm in love with Jesus. I love that song. And He's in love with me. I'll tell you what, He, he won my heart. He still got it, lock, stock, and barrel. I, I haven't found anything in the world that can compare with this Jesus. We Amen. Have. This Holy Ghost that dwells within us, there ain't nothing in the world can take. Who I feel it only right, right now. There's nothing in the world can take the place of that wonderful, wonderful thing. Amen. I'm blessed Amen. today. Amen. That he that he called me. Yes. Amen. Into an altar of prayer. Yes, sir. Praise God. It's a, the greatest event that ever happened in my life. Well, he called me to him and filled me with his spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And but since that time, I've had to be have my mind renewed. Amen. Because through the years in struggling with the churches and the ups and downs and people letting you down, even the preachers letting you down, they'll let you down, yeah. They're not God. You want to lift them up there and try to make them that, but they're just not that. They're just people trying to do God's will. And I remember our pastor, we we had a picture made up on there, and they put a little halo light around it. Boy, they offended a lot of people. that take that little light on that halo light and come on around it. There's a lot, a lot of black about it. Actually, I don't have a picture in here. I got a picture out there on the wall. You're going to look at it. You can throw darts at it or whatever you want to do. But... Uh, I don't think that's the bad. But but if you're not careful, you're worshiping someone. They fell down at Peter's feet and began to... Uh, was it Peter or was it Paul? Peter. Peter. Yes, Peter. 
and fell down on his feet. And he said, get up on your feet. I'm a man just like you are. Don't, don't worship me. Worship God. Yeah. But people have a tendency to do that. If they, yeah. they found something in you that touched their heart, and yeah. they, feel, they feel that. They want to make you God. And if you try to lift me up too much, God will... He'll uh, let me mess up enough to prove to you I definitely am not. Amen. <laughs> I knew the voice of reason to go through. You don't believe me, ask her. <laughs> but, uh, but, I, uh, but I love Jesus. I love God's way of living. Amen. I like living right. Back in my day when I was younger, that's what they said in the church. I'm living right. I'm trying to live right. Uh-huh. Living right, they call it. Now they don't even call it that because a lot of people they say they don't they don't live right. <laughs> they just come to church <laughs> and they and they come and they, then they go back out and kick the dog and holler at mama and cuss the neighbors and but uh, I still believe in living right. Oh yes. And I, I like living right. I like I like giving people my word and then trying to keep my word. Yes. And I like people that do that. I honor that more than anything else. If somebody tells you they're going to do something and try to do it. And a lot of times people ask me to do things and I say, listen, I'm not going to promise you. I, I, I really right. because I, I got a lot on me and I know it. And I say, I won't promise you, but I'll do my best. Uh, and, 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 you know, I'll really, I'll really work at it, trying to do what I said I'd do. And, but I believe if you say, I will do this or I will you do that, do it. you know, you, better do it. you ought to do it. I, I try to get Daisy sometimes to bear down on some things. We have a, a youth a club. Uh, 52. And some oh, we need a new one. That's yeah, I'll probably let the day date. Some people have been I so think. faithful to that, and we thank you for that. It's just a dollar or two a week, you know, as all amounts to. It's been like nine, ten dollars. It's been nine, ten dollars. And <laughs> I vowed when we had this thing that whatever they didn't come up with, I would make up the difference. My monthly <coughs> check is getting smaller and smaller because all these <laughs> things I vow to do. Because <laughs> it's nine dollars, guess. See, I decided if they didn't get at least $30 a month, I would make up the difference. And so that's $21 out of my pocket, you know, this week. And uh, so every time that, and for a long time, I mean, it was not only 30 sometimes it's 40 and 50 Yeah, it started out real good. And, and most times it does pretty good, honestly and truly, so I don't want to rub up on it. But it's just a dollar or two, a few Cokes. You know, and we use that to fund the young people. Uh, when we we'll take them to Chuck E. Cheese, or we we'll take them here, or take them there, or what do we want to do so the kids can have a, an out, a time out, or, and then we we'll save it up for our campground, and different things like that. And it's worked out really good, because almost every time we go to do something, we've generally got the money laid aside to at least halfway do it, and it doesn't kill us off. But, uh, but somebody, somebody lied to God. A pledge is a lie. Oh, yeah. You don't fulfill it. You say, I'm going to do something. The Bible says it's better not to make a vow, make a vow than to make a vow and break it. Right. Right. Nobody won't notice. Well, somebody notices. The guy that has to make up the difference between what you don't do, <laughs> he notices. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. It's a privilege to do that. As long as I got it, I'm happy. That I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But, I'm, but, but you... Uh, what does it say about your, uh, how's the scripture goes? That's your bringing damnation upon your soul. And, you know, the things we do has, has effect in our spiritual standing, in our spiritual life. Then when we get to where we're amiss, uh, amiss on things, then we get feeling, we don't feel apart. We feel separated from God. And in a way we are, but we've separated ourselves. Nobody's separated. I have never went to an individual in this church and said, you ain't been given time. I got news for some people here never have. And I've never said a word. Because you can live with it. We can live without it. But will a man rob God? He ties it up. That's the word. Yeah, there it is. That's the word. Oh, I wrestle with that. When I was making forty-eight dollars a week and I had five kids, it was big. That four dollar and eighty cents was big back in them days, and I had to war with it. And back then, they preached ties or hell. Uh huh. No joy. 
And we don't even preach it that way anymore. We, we, we believe, you know, it's by faith. It's a faith thing we do. We give it from the heart. We give it by faith. <clears throat> Knowing that you cannot outgive God, Amen. try me and see. Some people say, I tried that for a couple weeks and it didn't work. <laughs> it's not a game. No. <laughs> see, see, you used to have to do things because we had to and were commanded to, but now because we love Him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Some people think that God's going to return it back in money. Sometimes He don't do it in money. No. He okay. does miracles in your lives, yeah. healings and different things Amen. like that. You can't so out give it. It ain't just money. You can't out give it. What God gives you back, you can't buy. I guarantee you that. Amen. And sometimes it's monetarily, sometimes it's in health, sometimes it's in, it's in lots of different it ways. Is. Absolutely. Amen. And I can tell you, we raised our kids by laying hands on them. Yeah. Doctor, they, my kids never went to doctor. It's a very rare situation. They went to doctor. They come and say, Daddy, I'm sick. And I say, come in and put hands on them. And they say, I feel better now, Daddy. I mean, they have more faith than I did. Uh -huh. <laughs> Next thing you know, they're out there playing and hopping around and having a great time. That's, again, that's the mind of a child. Yes, amen. He said it. I they just accept it. They believe it. He said it. I believe it. Yeah. But when we get older, we get, I don't know. I don't know. I hope he does. They say, I hope he does. Uh -huh. No, I believe he will. I believe yeah. it. I know it does. I believe it's already yeah. paid for. Yeah. Yeah. According to the word. Hey, sickness, what are you doing around here? I'm well. What are you doing here? You know, because I'm sick. What are you doing here? Come on. The word says, I'm well. I'm well. Amen. Yeah. Healed. Yeah. 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 He that's weak, let him say, I'm strong. Right. Hey, yeah. I'm strong. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, devil. Growl on, but I'm strong. You ain't going to with me. Well, you know, it's in the mind. A lot of it is in the mind. Yes, it is. It's how you think. You, want, you know? Uh, so you're going to be converted. Except you be converted and become as a little child. See? Amen. you got to put this on. And you put it on by faith. Amen. And faith comes by the hearing. Amen. And hearing by the Word of God. Amen. So we thank God for, for the Word of God. Amen. That's why we come together. We've got all kinds of things wrong with it. We go home and feel it better. Yeah. I just feel like God just washed my face. Huh? Yeah. It feels pretty good. Yeah? Uh, I was just thinking. Uh, I, I was thinking a minute ago, and I done forgot what I was thinking about. Yeah, well, I know. I, I'm uh, that age, too. I understand. Uh, but uh, I'll get back with you in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot you forgot already? It was important. It was important. It's important. It's important. Bring it back to his remembrance. <laughs> it's important. You'll bring it up again. See, you found it. Well, uh, I was up there and I was talking to the doctor and I said, The battle's on. He said, That's right. We're in a battle. And my Jesus is the victor. Mm -hmm. You know, and they love me up there. They really, do, or else they pretend. Jesus paid them, buddy. But they, you know, but uh, now we got a lot of good people out there dispensing oh, yes. this medicine oh, yes. today. And, uh, sure. yes. Faithful people, people yes. full of God. Yes, sir. I thank God for them. My well, I cardiologist is one of them, brother. I, we, anyway, I, I said the battle's on, and yeah. I know the battle's on. I thank God for that He lives within. Amen. All right. Yeah, I'd rather have a man of faith. Yes. That's my doctor. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Well, I scored points with my doctor when I pronounced his name right. Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, a... Ganovich. Higanovich. Higanovich. Okay. I thought you were cursing at me when you first No, that's why I won't pronounce him. I'm afraid they'll think I'm cussing him. Uh, but, uh, for I say through the grace given to me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So he's dealt with every man the measure of faith. All of you have got a measure of faith. Some of you might need it stirred up or you need it fed from time to time. And it comes from the Word of God. It's amazing how that we, the last thing we turn to seems like is God. It's the Word of God. Sometimes it's true we don't feel worthy of it. I got news for you. There's none worth it. None. Not one. Never has been, never will be. He loves us in spite of us. He saved us. He loved us and saved us while we were yet in our sin. He didn't wait until we got good enough. No. Right? 
But that mindset stays no, with us. We have, to be dead. you know, we. Uh, by the way, we think we're just not worthy. So we'll 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 sit around and die before we tell somebody, you know, what, what we really got going on with us. And he said, here before you've not received because you've not asked. He All said, right. ask that your that joy may, may be full. full. Amen. It makes you joyful when you know that the Lord has moved on your behalf. Can you say amen? amen. 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 Now I laid all that foundation here <coughs> to start here in the 14th chapter. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Uh, you, in the faith, we're all at different levels in our faith, yes, sir. in our knowledge, in our growth, in our spirituality. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we're just like little children. Some kids, they get up and they take right off at a very uh, small age. Some kids, like my old, my youngest boy, Marty, didn't think he's ever going to get on his feet, you know. <laughs> the big old horse of a kid before he could ever get him, I'd say, come on, boy, walk, you know. <laughs> and little Marty, he, I mean, uh, Donnie, he was up going uh, very young. <clears throat> and I've told you about him roller skating. How he, out on the sidewalk, got a big old sidewalk from our house. He had roared down that sidewalk on him skates. He was about four years old or something. I was like, good God, that boy's going to kill himself. But, but cool. it's a difference in kids. You can't expect out of one, you know, and, and the fact of the matter is, and you, you know, Marty really, he, he, uh, he had this duh kind of thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, be careful. Uh, <laughs> uh, like he was in space, you know, he's just, he's just spacey, you know what I mean? <laughs> Smartest kid I got, he's a brilliant, he's brilliant. And to, when he was little, you wouldn't believe that. But yet, when, it, when as he got older, and all the kids had to study hard, he never bring a book home each three days. I mean, it's just unreal. And poor Donnie, he he had to study. He had to crack the books at midnight hour. He got good grades because he was he was a worker. And uh, of course, he he would soon be retiring the post office one of these days. He's done well. And, and, but Marty just. He's like fall off a log with him as easy as pie. But you wouldn't thought that when he was little. You thought that kid is. He's dumber than a box of rocks. <laughs> and he's brilliant. He's a brilliant kid. He went to the Air Force. He took advantage of everything they got. He's got a college education. He's He can talk to you about anything. I mean, he's got a good mind. He's still real down to earth. Has that big smile on his face. But he's a very brilliant kid. So, you see, you can't judge by, by outward by looking. You know, you just can't. And everyone is different. They're all, I've had to learn to deal with all my kids individually. They're all different. Yes, they are. You know? They all have different uh, You know, Tammy, I could just ball her out and she'd just cry. I'd say, oh, why don't you just whip me? i say, who wants a kid that got a whip all the time? You know? <laughs> but Marty, you could have thumped him all over the place and he'd just laugh at you. You know? Yeah. That all you got? You know? <laughs> but Molly, I'm serious. Yeah. You wear yourself out with them kids. You could <laughs> you smile at you. The little smile you got. That is true. I remember one time he was he was bigger than me, you know what I mean? And he said, he looked at that on me. I said, I said, you'll never whip me, you understand that, boy? I said, I'll take you to the woodshed, you'll never whip me. He saw oh, daddy pat you on the head. I would hit you. <laughs> but I don't want to know who was boss. He didn't really much care, you know. Okay. If it makes you feel good, you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, that's what his attitude was. Really, really a sweet guy. If you knew him, you'd love him to death. But, uh, so you always got strength and weakness in the faith. And he said, you receive him because, why? Because he's a child of God. Amen. That's right. You know, but don't get all wrapped up in what, is, what you don't agree. Uh, I, I've never said under anybody I totally agreed with. I've never... Amen. I've never seen anybody I totally agreed with. That's no. just the way life is. That's right. You know? And I, I come out of a church where you about had to agree with them. Mm -hmm. you, you just couldn't stay around if you didn't agree with them. <coughs> I mean, they couldn't hardly tolerate it. Oh, no, they persecuted you. Everybody had to walk lock, step, and say the same yeah. thing, and act like, and look like, and, you know? <laughs> and, and, but I discovered that God loves the difference in us. About years ago, I worked with a man that uh, claimed to be a Christian. And he and I got to talking one time. I was doing maintenance. We were in the maintenance shed, and we were talking about Christian principles. And after a little while, listening to this man, I stood across the table from him with a smile on my face and thought, 
this man ain't no Christian. He don't know what it means to be a Christian. He ain't got a clue. <laughs> and the Lord rebuked me like that. Ooh. said, now see, this is the reason I said not to strive with one another under doubtful disputation. Uh -huh. Because you've come to the point where you strove with him now to the point that you doubt that he's my yeah, son. you don't have any respect. And he's ever bit my son as much as you are. Oh, God. And I had to repent. And I have sure. learned since then that, you know, you can't go by the outward no. appearance. Yes. No. My big brother one time, you're talking about uh, family members. We was all gathered around. My mother was trying to get him to do something, and he's trying to get away from her. And he knocked her down the steps. Ooh, the back steps, about three steps. And boy, she took a switch to him, and she made us watch. Cut the blood. He would not cry. Cut the blood on you. He absolutely would not cry. And when she got done, she said, Now I want you to turn around and apologize to these children for knocking their mother down the steps. Then he cried. Oh. See, God knows the heart. He sure. does, don't he? Uh -huh. yeah. All that time, we didn't do a thing, but just no. a few words from other than he yes. was, he was yes. killed, wasn't he? Um. Well, you know, we, we all have our, our makeup, and the wonderful thing of it, of it is that God understands every one of us. I can look to you and say, well, that's silly. I don't see why that would be such a, you know. Sure. Sure. I can do it. Well, the Bible said there is a people that judge themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves yeah, and these people wise. are not wise. Uh, yeah. And I look at people and say, my God, what would it make them want to do something like that? Well, because they're people. <laughs> people do dumb stuff and you, you ain't going to understand it. Even my own kids. My God, I can't believe I raised that kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You <laughs> see, doing what they, they, they weren't taught to be like that. Well, that's what we're taught. That everybody's an individual. Amen. And everybody answers as an individual. Amen. And God understands that difference. And I, aren't you glad about that? Amen. All your little quirks and all your silly little idioms, idiosyncrasies, or how do they say this? God understands all that, don't He, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, it's a Amen. word. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a word? Idiosyncrasy. Idiosyncrasy. Yes, that's a word. Yeah, it is. Well, I was agreeing. I said that is That's your odd peculiarities, yeah. Idiosyncrasy. Just I hadn't heard it. Woman, woman, name a few of yours. <laughs> uh, let's do that. <laughs> hey. uh, just try, me. just try to lighten the atmosphere here. Amen. Right <laughs> <laughs> I can take Mark it. suspense. <laughs> you can take it. <laughs> God said, For one believeth that he may eat all things, and who is weak. Another, he said, Who is weak eateth herbs. Uh, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Now, how can that be? Amen. That's God's business. Yes, it is. I'll tell you one thing. God won't let me do that. Well, don't do it. <laughs> but one of the scriptures that really set me free was where it said, uh, Blessed is the man that is not condemned in that which he allows. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I saw that. I said, Wow, that's good. Because I, I wasn't raised with that kind of thing. No, no, I wasn't. Either. Blessed is the man that is not condemned in that which he allowed. In other words, I allow Rocky Top, so don't try to condemn me about Rocky Top. It don't bother me. That's right. So don't try to make me some kind of a bad sinner because I like Rocky Top. So I can't listen to that stuff. What well, good? Don't listen. <laughs> Amen. But leave us alone that likes Rocky Top. Yeah, okay? yeah, I like Rocky Top. Why, well, yeah, everybody likes Rocky Top. Yeah. I mean, not everybody. But... No, I, I was raised in that old world. The world and us, world and us is taking its toll. <laughs> I was raised on that. These little no hard sins are making us cold. We had better wake up and realize in time that it's the little foxes that are spoiling the vine. And there's a lot of truth in that. And I don't think it's rocky top. No. I don't think it's rocky top. I think it's chocolate. Don't think it's chocolate either. Yeah, it's the chocolate. No. No, it's, 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 it's hatred, it's, uh, it's right. jealousy, Bitterness. it's all it's jealousy. the spiritual things that you yeah. told us uh, that we had to fight against. And we Absolutely. Did sure we did. And like uh, Chocolate, now see, I know she could bathe in it. 
Lisa does too. Chocolate's the last thing I Lisa eat. Loves. I, 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 I can eat it. I like fudge. Like Lisa but loves. It really, it truly is. A lot of things I eat for each other. I can some people are just, are just Jerry's and chocolate. just drugged up. Jerry's chocolate. <laughs> and it's a difference in people. We all have those yes, things. I don't like that we, that we, uh, So we don't judge one another by these things. Right. I've, I've told the story about uh, Brother Colter back, and you were probably sick of hearing the story, but it's my story. And so. <laughs> 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 They, uh, you know, they were very strong on outward appearance in Brother Becky. Now, I, what amazed me, I watched that church go through a process. Now, way back there, uh, when I was Sister Betty, they were real, they, they, they went through a real uh, light period where the outward appearance didn't mean a whole lot to them. And, they, and, and Betty, but Betty loved Brother Baggett. She just thought that he was it. He's a wonderful preacher. He really was. He's from Nashville, Tennessee. And God, he can preach a hat off your head. And and uh, he'd come and visit us uh, at least 20 times a year. Everybody would love him to come. But he, he uh, I remember one night he got up and he was talking about uh, bowling. He said, oh, by the way, I bowl. And everything got so quiet. All bad. They didn't believe in that stuff. No. Nope. I mean, you get hurt a pin. I got off. in trouble for By that. By the way, so I bowled. You did. Anybody got any problem with that? And I bowled in a long skirt. And a lot of things like that. And then after that, I don't know what, uh, you know, what happened. They, they, they tightened way up again. They got real tight again. And by the time I was out preaching and stuff, they, they just tightened it up, you know. And so they went back the other way. Yeah. It's like I said, the, the hem line can only come up so far. That's right. Until it goes back down. I mean, that's the styles of life. That's the way things are. As long as they don't go up too far, you know. And I have seen it really, really bad. I, I mean, I've seen it so bad on the front row that I had to look down to keep looking up. Now, maybe you've never seen it that bad, but I have. I've been around a long time. been doing this 50 years. So I've seen the hemline come up, go down, and come up, and go down. And uh, guess what? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. That's right. And I believe we ought to try to keep it modest. All right, we put a sign here saying modest, and you say, I believe that's this, and somebody says, I believe that's this, and you I believe it's this. It's always life. That's the way life is. All got our ideas about what it is, right? But I went through them wars back back in those days about all those kind of things. Amen. But I, uh, Brother Kohler wanted me to come over to help him work on his house. I was down there holding a Bible. He said, and, and every every day that see, you want to go over to so and so's house. Always love to go to Sister Cunningham's house because she made them fried peach uh, pies. You know, she fried them in a skillet. Boy, she, she was good. <laughs> I get out of here sometimes, starve to death. <laughs> now tomorrow you're going over here. So every day I go to somebody else's house. You know, and. Uh, so Brother Carter come to time to go to his house and he said, I got a real treat for you. He fed me bologna sandwich. I'd had I never kind of had kind of food by the time I got to his house. I was I was kind of sick of eating anyhow. So we had bologna sandwiches and he wanted me to help him work on his house. Well, the first thing he did peeled his shirt off, see. Oh God. How can a preacher get out in the yard with his shirt off? Oh my goodness. I mean, it, it offended me so bad. And he said, <laughs> he said this doesn't offend you, does Brother Pat? I said, oh no, I lied. Yeah, yeah. I lied. I lied, see? No, oh, don't bother me at all, Brother Carter. It was killing me. It was eating me alive. <laughs> Years later, we laughed about it, joked about it. I said, you remember that time I took my shirt off? I said, oh, this don't offend you. And I said, I said, no. And he said, I said, I lied to you. I lied to <laughs> you. He, he laughed. He said, why did you tell me? So I put it back on. Just stupidity. Just something to, something to, to bother us with, you know. And uh, so, but that was, uh, I just couldn't see how a preacher could do that. But he was condemned all about it. So all the carrying on I've done about it, it, it didn't bother him any. I mean, it, would, it wouldn't have bothered him any, right? No. But that's between him and God. But if God had said you ought to, you ought to get out there and pray to wrap without a shirt off. Yeah. And now, no, nobody tell me nothing. I go to Florida, I go to the beach, guess what? I wear a shirt. I don't 
care if you don't wear a shirt. It don't bother me at all. Thank God for that. <laughs> I that well, we, we couldn't we couldn't bathe publicly. We couldn't go out. We couldn't do a lot of things. And I remember at 36 years old standing in the, in the Gulf of Mexico down there and said, what's wrong with this? <laughs> they preached this again. I stayed out of swimming pools and uh, and stuff like that and deprived myself for what? Yeah, people watching. There wasn't nobody watching me. Church people watching you. Yeah. They're the only ones that say anything. I found that out. They go down there. They go down there. A lot of them sneak out of town and go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Or if I find out you went to a movie, I went to see the Ten Commandments about crucifying me over. I want to see that so bad that really it wasn't all that much. They just they just throw the hissy over that. Go and see the Ten Commandments. And they just said, well, if they've been real friends, if they'd, they said, what you really need to do is just go to Bloomington and nobody know it. <laughs> that's what they did. They found out later, that's what they did. Uh -huh. I was trying to do what they told me to do and found out they were doing this other stuff. I'll see you in Bloomington. It's called working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If it condemns you, then don't go. Just right. don't have any pardon. Don't worry about what somebody else is doing. You do what you know is right to do, right? right. See how easy this is? <laughs> well, no, we can't stand that. If we're going to be bound up and tied up and locked up, we want everybody else to be bound up too. Oh, I thank God He set me free from that state. Amen. It just doesn't bother me at all. For one believeth that He may eat all things, others weak in the earth. And, and, and let me read over the first verse. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant to his own master? He standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be hid. Uh, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. So. His salvation is in God's hands. Amen. 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 And if God wants him to do different, he's well able. And I can tell you one thing, there are a lot of things I do today that I didn't want to do. And there are a lot of things I don't do that I want, didn't think a thing about. God got the message to me. And when he gets the message to you, and I'll tell you what you can do, you can be at home in the dark house with nobody around, and when it comes on the TV, you got to turn the channel because it ain't nobody else. Amen. But it's that wee small voice in your Amen. head that says, you know you ought to be watching this. Amen. This is not fit for it to be watched. But when I was raised up, they'd do that over the Lone Ranger. Amos and Andy. Yeah, Amos and Andy. <laughs> Jack Benny, oh, that's a regular. I got real peeled over. Uh, Jack Benny, Roger. Uh, little House on the Prairie. <laughs> little House on the Prairie. Yeah, that's not bad when they're that's evil, oh, that. evil wicked show. Because they told me that the actors were not married and they was laying in the bed. Oh, God. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Too much information. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was acting. But that's the plane, the level that some people live on. They live yes, on that plane. They do. There's a lot in the world that's that's not right. And it's just like eating good fish. I love good freshwater fish. I just about soon have it as anything they are. But you got to deal with the bones. And especially if you don't know how to fillet real good, you just got to dig through them. That's all. You just do the best you can. But I always manage because I love the fish. All right? But you got to throw them bones away. And in life, there's lots of bones. Yes, there is. <laughs> it just is. There's good, there's just bad. What you do? Well, just take the good and reject the bad. That's what you do. And that's why God gives you consciousness. Why He speaks Absolutely. to your soul and He tries to teach you what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Amen. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded his own mind. I just don't believe in doing things on Sunday. No. The Sabbath day. Number one, the Sabbath day is Saturday. Right. It's not That's Saturday. Right. There is. There is. If you believe in keeping it, keep it. Don't do nothing on Saturday. Go lock yourself in a room and just don't eat it. That's your business. But he that regardeth the day, as I was talking about too, the day of the Lord, he that regardeth the day 
unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth the Lord, for he giveth thanks. And he that eateth not the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. For none of us live to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live in the Lord, and whether we die, we die in the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Amen. I told you about this brother that I that I went to church with one time and said uh, it, was, it was a joke. He said it as a joke. He meant it as a joke. I didn't know it. I thought he was serious as a heart attack. When I first met him at the church. You don't need to worry about judging anybody. Daisy can tell you about it. He was quite a character. Brother Davis said, I know you knew this church, but I want you to understand something. You don't never have to worry about judging anybody. He said, I am the church judge. <laughs> I do all the judging. <laughs> oh, what kind of a character is this? <laughs> he made himself the church judge. So don't worry about this. I'll take care of all the judgment and you don't have to worry about it. Well, I don't worry about it. <laughs> but uh, but I walked away not worried about him either, you know. But uh, it takes all kinds. But the Bible said to let every man work out his own salvation Amen. with fear and with trembling. And that means this is serious business as we're doing here. We're working out our salvation. We're trying to find our way. Knock, and he said, it shall be opened unto you. Ask, you shall receive. Give, and it shall be given to you. See, all these things come from God. He's able to enlighten us on everything we need to know, what we should do, where we should go. And just be careful about pointing fingers and say, well, I believe he, he said that about one pointing a finger and said, I'm glad I'm not like this publican over here. I'm glad I'm not like this publican. And he knew. He said, oh, you hypocrites. You clean up the outside and the inside is full of dead men's bones, extortion, murders. See? Man looks on the outward appearance. But God looks upon the heart. Aren't you glad of that today? Amen. I love y'all. God bless.